<laughs> Hello, welcome to tonight's show. <laughs> We're going to start off with this week's I Can't Make This Up. Oprah and the Rock are getting backlash for the relief fund that they put together for the Maui wildfire victims. A uh, hundred people are missing and over 600 are displaced. Uh, pretty much fans or just people that's on the internet are complaining that they don't like the fact that Oprah and the Rock are asking for money to help these people out instead of just funding it themselves and just giving them the, the money. Well, I've noticed that things like this happen as celebrities speak up. And I guess they feel that their name and who they are is more valuable than just giving up some money. That's that reminds me of um, '70s pimping. <laughs> so there was a statement that was released that says. Um, it's to the public and it says, go get my money, bitches, before I have The Rock put the smack down on your sweet candy asses. Signed, a pimp named Oprah. P.S. Say the whole thing like a drive call press. Moving along to finance, moneywise.com says that young, rich Americans don't have any more faith in the stock market and they are more interested in investing in other assets like commercial real estate, <laughs> diversifying art, wine cellars, and funding loans. Look, no, I just don't think that's any more, that's not secure, it's not. It's no more secure than Takashi 69 at the gym. Moving along to the East Coast, what the hell, Massachusetts. If Massachusetts could not get any more races, According to an article I read on Man and Home, Massachusetts school district are ditching advanced math because it attracts too many white students. And parents are pissed, saying that the decision will exude inequalities by limiting advanced math to those who can afford a tutor. So let me get this straight. You guys, instead of just supplying advanced math and tutors to the poor and unfortunate, you rather just take it away from the fortunate which pretty much is gonna make everybody equally stupid. That's equality for you. Hmm. I guess a lot of politicians might come out of uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> well, sorry for engineering the UMass. Massachusetts, you nah, we're not letting off you yet. We're gonna stay in what the hell, Massachusetts. So I read in the Daily Caller that uh, <laughs> A school district has put a teacher on administrative leave for reading happy endings aloud in class. What is happy endings? <laughs> not, not that happy ending. Well, I guess kind of. So happy endings is a collection of short stories read by famed author Margaret Atwood. So here's a quote from the book, and I'm going to look down and read it. This is read to children. He comes to her apartment twice a week as she cooks him dinner. You'll notice that he doesn't even consider her worth the price of a dinner out. And after he's eaten dinner, he fucks her. And then after that, he falls asleep. That's what they read to the kids. So let me get this straight. Massa, Chooses, you don't want to offer advanced math to the underprivileged then you're taking it away from the privileged but you would rather educate kids on selling coochies and fish dinner combos out of bed and breakfast um how are they going to count the whore money if you take away the math maybe just maybe you just call a pimp named oprah to come and just count all the money and make sure everybody finances are straight that is the end of this week's I Can't Make This Up. We got a hell of a show. We got Swifty McVeigh and Redbone. This is Late AF with Dean Beans. One, two, three, four.
All right, we got a special show today. I'm talking, we about to go back. We're going to go all the way back, all the way up to now. I got a very special guest. I've known this dude since 87 or 8. He's done a lot of dope things, a lot of dope things. Without, He really don't need no introduction, but we're going to give it to him. Put your hands together. Everybody out there watching the screen for <laughs> Swifty McVeigh. D12. Yes, sir. What's poppin'? <laughs> My brother. Man. Yes, okay, so yes, check it out. Yes. I'm going to take you back. This is a story. 80, I'm going to go 89. We're going to skip 87 and 88. Okay. 1989 gym class. What was our, our gym teacher name? He used to call us Lunchbox. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, dog. I would have never remembered that. Too. <laughs> you yeah. sure did. So somebody say, yeah. Want you to battle rap this other rapper? I'm like, who? They like Andre. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. So back then, I was reading the dictionary and pulling out all the big words and just making them rhyme. <laughs> yeah. And I battled you, and I I, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I lost bad. That's I, crazy. I remember I remember the gym class in, in, in Lunchbox, but I don't remember that battle, though. Yeah, we battled, and like I said, I was saying a whole bunch of five, six-syllable words, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, trying to be, and I was doing a Keith Murray before we knew who Keith Murray was, right? Yep, yep. And, I think we all, we all went through that stage, too. Mm, but the, here's the dope part. After I lost, I was embarrassed, because I don't even remember what you said, but I was embarrassed, because I got smoked. You you walked up to me and you said, hey, man, I can tell you dope, but don't nobody know what the hell you saying. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dog. <laughs> but literally from, from, from that day on, whenever I wrote a song, I made sure that whatever I, point I was trying to get across was easily understood. Mm. Literally from that battle to today. Damn. Right? Then you fast forward a little bit. We got a talent show coming up. And my older brother is cutting his word in the back of everybody's <laughs> head that's in his rap crew called the Narcotics Clan. The Narcotics Clan. <laughs> 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 oh. They had a song called, I think it was Let's Go Nar Narcos, something, something like that. I, something like that. Uh, yep, Let's Go Narcos. It was two rappers, dancers, <laughs> uh, Keith, Hudson Keith Hudson was dancing Yep, back then. They had like four dancers in the back. Yeah. That shit was crazy, dog. So and then this, we changed the name to Dope, uh, the Dope Enterprise. The Dope Enterprise. And then at the school talent show, when they tried to, when they introduced us, they played us. It was like, give it up for the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they asked us to even say dope. No. That is funny. That's right. They did change it right before the talent show. They yeah. sure did. So I didn't make the talent show because I just well, I wasn't there yet. I, I, I wasn't ready. But I'm sitting on stage because before then, I'd never been to a performance mm. except for my sixth grade talent show when I rapped. You okay. know? I'd never seen other people like perform rap. Y'all yeah. was the first people that I had seen. Mm. And I'm looking at all of these girls screaming like y'all the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I mean, all these like, I want to do that. Wow, it was, it was an epic, that was an epic time because uh, I remember after that talent show, we had ended up going to the principal's office and asked the principal, we said, yo, we know graduation coming up soon. Can we do our own show and charge two dollars to get to the show? We we let y'all raise it for graduation. Wow! And they let us do our own show. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Yep. So so <laughs> now that's my first rap battle. That's crazy. Learned how to be understood. Learned I, I learned how to perform, and now I'm learning. Now <laughs> that's the first independent <laughs> anything that I ever seen right there in middle school. Wow! And, and it was just kids just trying. Yep. You yep. know. Yeah, just for the, the love, the love of it, man. It, I mean, you know, we all had these, these thoughts of making money one day, but it didn't matter. We just loved, we just loved to it. do what we did, man. So, so everybody had that that one rapper that when they heard him, it sparked them, and they started mimicking them. Mine was Rock Kim. Okay. Like, I wrote verses, move the crowd, the two, the dial, the da, the, the, I used to write like him all the time. Yeah. Who was that rapper? that you mimicked when you first started rapping? 
It had it had to well when I first started rapping, it had to be uh, Run DMC mm. because Run because Run DMC was the first was the first group I ever heard metaphor from. So when mm. when I heard Run say Calvin Klein, no friend of mine, don't want nobody's name on my behind. When I was young and heard that, mm. and I knew what Calvin Klein jeans yeah. was, and it was just like a what? Wow. I want to write clever shit. But when Rakim came out. The cadence, everybody tried to flow like Rakim. Yeah. He changed the whole game when it came to cadence. And now I can listen to old songs when I was a teenager and be like, man, I thought I was Rakim, dog. Man, <laughs> you can tell me I wasn't going to be Rakim, bro. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I watched the interview on him. He um, he spoke on how he got his cadences. Did you know he was a trumpet player? I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a trumpet player. So the, his rap cadences was what he would play on a trumpet jazz Jazz riffs. That's how he wrote his verses. That's crazy. And and I was gonna, I was telling you earlier how my sister helped me in, help, inspire me through Rakim. No, <laughs> 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 I used to come home from school. Duh, cause you know my uh, my sister. Shout out to Redbone. Duh, she already was a beast on the mic. So she used to come home from school and telling me how she done battled dudes. I used to be like, dog, you said what? You said that, oh, you know, I used to get all hype and shit. So when I found her lyric book and I seen these lyrics on um, on, on paper, I used to look at her like, dog, you sweet as hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what you was mimicking your yeah, sister. Yeah, so, so basically, basically I was just reading this motherfuckers like, damn, okay, okay. So when I came and seen that damn paid full tape sitting next to that radio, I said, what the hell is this? Go rope and shit. Mm-hmm. I popped the tape in and heard Rakim dog. I look, I went and go grab them damn lyrics. I was like, listen, I was like, this Rakim lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, she was writing down his lyrics and was yep. battling people with him? <laughs> no, she, oh. wasn't ba- she wasn't battling people with him, but you know, the lyrics were so dope, you wanted to memorize them. So she wrote So she was writing them down to try to memorize the Got words, it. but I knew her handwriting. Mm-hmm. So when I read them, I thought that was her raps. Oh. So I'm looking at her like, you sweet as that. The greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how that went, dog. Oh man, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lowdown. Okay. Right. So I'm a just a quick story. So, you know, we was all rapping. That by the time we hit high school, you know, mm-hmm. I'm cool with Low. I used to go over there, and one day he puts me on the phone with somebody to battle somebody. I remember them three way battles too. Dog. Right, the phone battles. So I get on the yeah. phone, I get busy. Mm. And the guy was like, man, that rap cold, but man, Lowdown battled us with the same verse. <laughs> I was like, what you mean? <laughs> what you mean? And I looked at him like, what's going on? He got the phone. He's like, man, I really like that verse, man. <laughs> Dog. Oh, I couldn't even be mad because it was like, damn, he liked my verse that much that he remembered it. And it wasn't like I had a song. Mm. So imagine somebody just hearing you spit. Yep. Remembering it. Yep. My, my homeboy, Paul. Paul used to do the rest in peace to Paul. He used to do that to Mighty Rare. Yep. I woke up early in the morning when I started my day. I memorized Red Bone's first round. Yep, I did it. So it, it, I guess it's just a part of nature when you're it's trying what to the find spark yourself. Is. Yep. I mean, because when you think about it, my Rakim verse was the first verse I memorized. Mm. I just didn't spit it to nobody like it was mine. But you know, it was the first verse I I, I knew it was somebody else's. So I, yeah. I get it, but it was just funny to me. I was like, what? And, and a lot of cats don't know about them three way car battles, dog. Mm-hmm. There's been plenty nights I done got on the phone and like three or four different dudes on the phone, like, what's up now? <laughs> <laughs> I got my paper together at the table on the phone, like, okay, what's up, what's up? Yeah. And battling over the phone, the, dog. The three-way battles, the pause mixes. Mm, yep. Like, the first time I heard of a pause mix, uh, I, went, I was at DJ Dez's house. Yep, he, he was a king of the it. Big shout out to DJ Dez, dog. And he was playing the beats, and I was like, oh, man, can you make some beats for me? He was like, no, nah, you whack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Dez was—he yeah, was outspoken with it. But I mean, I got—I 
I was never, I, I'm not mad at it because he was also the same person. Remember, he was working at Bob Wright Records. Okay. When I wanted beats, he wouldn't make them for me, but he would let me on the slide borrow records from Bob Wright to mm. go to Mo Masters and make my own beats. Legendary Mo Masters. Yeah, so Dez was really pushing me yeah. instead of just giving me stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. So let's fast forward to high school. I think it's fourth hour. The lunch table. The lunch hour, fourth hour lunch, dog. When nothing like it. That was the most epic hour of the day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. The terrible ass pizza. The square <laughs> fries, pizzas and fries. Pizza and fries. And we was beating on the table. And I dog, and I'm quite sure I can speak for everybody else that was there. We all looked it forward to fourth hour lunch, dog. Yeah. We had to make sure that no matter what they said on our schedule. We we made four hour lunch our lunch. Like if it was third hour, we like nah, dog. We mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was me, you, PL, Sanchi. Yep. Uh, you remember P- Pizzazz? Pizzazz. Yep. Pizzazz. He was the first. He was the first person I battled when I got in high school too. At the lunch table. Man. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And he got me with that one line. And everybody was just like, oh, he was like, this ain't in vogue, so why don't you let go? <laughs> Everybody was like, oh shit. I was like, damn, dog. But then, but I mean, like, it was like, yeah, we was in school, but no, nah, we was there to rap. Like, yep. I would write raps at home, like, just so I could get props from. It was only six of us that was constantly at that lunch at table. That table yep. I wanted to get props at that lunch table. Yep. And I wish you knew the verse because I was going to ask you to spit it. You had it. You had a. You had a verse called "Days Are Numbered," mm, mm, mm. and it was a story. And I can't remember m- most of it, but it went all the way down to the person going to court and all this other stuff. And it was just all these numbers in there. Yeah. And you you, you got tired of us asking you to spit that damn <laughs> verse. Like, Come on, man. I remember the title, man. Damn, I re- I remember the Days title vividly, but just can't remember none of the rhymes. That's yes. crazy. Yeah, and then um. Here's something that's really gonna make you laugh. That speak speaking of numbers, you got into a fight in high school. Okay. <clears throat> and you was counting the punches out loud. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no. So so he was in a group called Outcast at the time. Yeah. Before Outcast was Outcast. And we had to change our name because of Outcast. Mm-hmm. Yep. Y'all had a song called Flatline. Yep. Right? Yep. And so you got you get into a fight with this guy. I remember it was right at right at the school on the street, and you hollered one, <laughs> and you hit the dude, and you said two, <laughs> three, flatline, and not two. <laughs> <Duh. laughs> I wish you remember because I, I want to know what was on your mind. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> we Duh. laughing, and it was just like, this dude just really, did you just predict that? You like the Nostradamus <laughs> are knocking niggas out? What the hell? <laughs> That's crazy, dog. But, you know, it, it was just, it was funny because you said Flatline, and I was like, wait a minute, they got a song called Flatline. And flat I remember line. Flatline. I remember the beat and everything. Yeah, I, was it just, Johnny Terry that made that? Johnny Terry made that. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep, big shout out to Johnny Terry. We actually uh, went with Johnny Terry, like, it was two weeks of school left, and we was like, bump these two weeks. And we drove out to New York to try to get a deal. Mm-hmm. Wrote down a whole bunch of rec- uh, uh, addresses on the uh, paper oh, from the, from the, the tapes door. and just walk in the door like, boom, yep. Yeah. Man, <laughs> so what, 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 what was that like? Like when you just walked in the door, was it y'all received, y'all turned yeah, away? Yeah, we, we actually, we had a, we had got a room at the Holland Tunnel in New Jersey, right, right at the Holland Tunnel before you go in to get to Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And we went in there and we went to Def Jam and they embraced us. Dev Jam, really? yep, I never forget. Dev Jam embraced us, and um, we was in there for about a good six or seven hours. They like they loved our demo, cause at the time we had that that New York grungy, red man type the of Eric flavor. Eric Sherman, funk. Yep, yeah, the Eric Sherman, cause you know Johnny Terry had that type of flavor in him, and they loved they gravitated towards that flavor. So they told us it was like, yo, man, when y'all get back to Detroit, man, make some more music, make some more music, and send us send us some more music. 
But when we got back to Detroit, life jumped in the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I guess Johnny Terry wanted to do other things. And his, his life jumped in the way, and it was just like a damn. So we kind of, we lost the contact. Mm. But it inspired us, though, because we knew, like, dang, if, if we would have sent them some more music, mm -hmm. they probably would have signed us. You wow. know what I'm saying? They kept us there for six hours. They even called the hotel and booked our hotel. They didn't pay for it, but they booked the hotel for us. That's how much they kind of embraced mm. us. We was watching artists walk in and out the door. OG, the Bulldogs, uh, wow. Flatliners. Ed OG. Ed OG, the Bulldogs, yeah. yep. uh, <clears throat> Flatliners. Mm -hmm. That's when we learned that one of them, uh, Red Run, was Russell Simmons' nephew. Mm -hmm. We battled them in front of Def Jam. Wow. Yep, we battled the Flatliners. It was crazy. Who won? I don't know. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't nobody to, to judge. They, they went for theirs, we went for ours. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. just a, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But they amazed me because their style was totally different than Detroit. So I was just really entertained, like, mm -hmm. damn. And they inspired us and didn't even know it, watching them from a whole nother city back at that time do their thing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so by the time you guys, um, after high school, hip hop shop was, 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 was going on like yep. about a year later, right? Yep, and what's so crazy was, right before the hip hop shop got mm -hmm. popping, we did the talent show at the Grand Quarters, and you was there. It was me, you, Pierre. Me and Pierre was there, yeah. and you was there. This is the I first. I was probably dancing, wasn't I? I, you, I don't know if you was dancing or rhyming, but you was there. Mm -hmm. And I met Mr. Porter there. Mr. Porter was there with his mm -hmm. group. He had a group called Crazy Tunes. And um, that was the first time I ever heard Protect Your Neck. My Wu Tang, it was crazy. Like that, you know, we was just all had a cipher. You was rapping, cause we had a yeah. cipher there at the talent at the talent show. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. At that particular time, but I'm saying that to say I met Mr. Porter there. Oh and wow. We, yep, and we this was before the hip hop shop opened, and then when the hip hop shop finally opened, I ended up seeing Mr. Porter there, and we was reminiscing like, man, yeah, yeah. We was talking about the judge, cause we used to always crack on the judge and mm -hmm. shit back then. At the Grand Quarters, but you know, but that's just something, a fun fact that I met Mr. Porter before the hip hop shop opened. And when I seen him there, we was able to to jail to jail again. Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. it was crazy. So while the hip hop shop was going on, I went one time, and actually you told me to go. Mm. I went one time. I got on the mic one time, and that then, was it. That was it. Damn. Because <clears throat> see, what y'all ain't know, I was raising kids. Okay, you know, my daughter was born right after high school. And I had a son before then. Okay. So I couldn't come out and hang like everybody else was. Mm. You know, I yeah. I met uh, Lo Lewis in them okay. downtown. Him, Coco, and Alvin was like in front of Hart Plaza just rapping. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I heard somebody name something and then they start freestyling off of it. Okay. I was like, wow. Big shout out to Lo Lewis. We, yeah. we used to battle in high school <clears throat> when, when our school, different schools used to go to different parks. Yeah. Like, so if his high school went to a park for a high school event and our high school went, for some, way, for some reason, we just always met up and mm -hmm. just battled real quick and left. Or if I seen him downtown in a cypher and we'll walk up, we just ended up battling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how it used to be, dog. It yeah. wasn't nothing planned. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It was just random, spontaneous ciphers going on and yeah. shit. You know. So when that happened, I moved to Texas. Okay. And I ended up starting to do shows down there. Um, I wasn't cool with these guys. I just happened to do uh, work for the guy that did sound equipment for the concert, so they would let me open up. Okay. So all of the screwed up click, I was down there, little Kiki opening up for these guys. Oh, man. And it, it turned into opening up for Total, opening up for Too Short, opening wow. up for UGK and all of this stuff. And I don't remember how, but somehow me and you got back in contact again and you was telling me about the hip hop shop. Okay. I might have came home or something. Mm. And you was like, man, it's this guy named Eminem. Mm. You got to hear him. Look, any rapper saying those kind of rhymes in this day and age, in this period of time, trying to battle Eminem is worse than David Starr trying to battle Proof IQ, B Fat, and Bizarre. <laughs> That's why you act differently. You ain't got no style, especially not delivery. Not to brag, I don't mean to boast. Look, my face is pale, but you look like you've seen the ghost. <laughs> Yeah, man, he was battling and he told this dude, 
uh, why you gotta be saying that I'm racist? Cause yeah. my face is. Why does your shoelaces? <laughs> yeah. And tell all your boys you got beat by a honky, something like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You were, I remember you telling me this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, really? And then like months later. <sighs> yep, yep. We used to, uh, I used to always come to the neighborhood with all his music and demos and stuff that he done did and let people hear it. Mm -hmm. People was feeling them, but it was some people that was turning their face away when they found out he was white. Like, man, come on. Lyrically, you just, if, if you into lyrics, you just couldn't d deny that. Yep. Like, it was just too, too, too genius level of. I remember with me and, um, me and Beretta, Big shout out to Beretta, Mr. Wrong. Mr. Wrong. We were signed. We were signed to an independent label, and um, and M gave us the demo. It's like, yo, get us to your CEO, man. He was asking us to give out his demo to the CEO. Wow. So they can, <clears throat> so he can sign them. And when we did it, he in the car talking about some. Man, ain't nobody about to buy no white boy. Ain't nobody about to fuck with no white boy. We and Beretta used to look like man, you crazy. Come on, nah, come on. Nah. Yep, yep. Yeah, hip, hip hop was was a little racist at 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 one, one um, point. Yeah. I mean, I think as black people, that was the one thing we had a one up on systemically. Like, yeah, yeah. We owned hip, hip hop at one point. You and know I, and I guess a lot of people couldn't <clears throat> couldn't get you know shake get the fact that a white a white guy was that dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But us, we embraced that shit like. Dog. And a whole different style. Yeah. Yeah, a whole different style. Yeah. But all of you guys had, and that's one thing I love about that era. Y'all was a group, but none of y'all rapped the same. Mm. Everybody was 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 different. I remember when I when I heard Purple he, Purple Hills, or Purple yeah. Pills. Purple Purple. It, it, it was Purple Pills, but MTV made us turn it into Purple Hills for the clean version. Right. Yeah. So the beat came on. And I was like, I ain't never heard nothing like, I never heard a halftime beat like that. And y'all was rapping double time on mm. top of it. It was, just, it broke my brain for a second. Mm. But I was like, it's making you. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I was like, this song is crazy. Played oh, it again and again and again. I remember when that album came out, I listened to it and I was just like, Wow. Yeah, man, that album was, was real special because every track on that um, album we built from the ground up. Really? Yeah, yeah. We started we started off, everything off with a drum and built around it, every song. Wow. So you sort of, yeah. So what was, was there, what was it hard for you guys to build or did it just automatically gel? It, it, it automatically gelled for the simple fact that I mean, you know, like even though D12 was already together mm -hmm. and I was doing my own thing, I already had a certain camaraderie. So so the chemistry was real easy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know, I came in, had to meet everybody and try to figure out everybody's style and character and to fit in. I kind of knew everybody just from being around a hip hop shop. The hip hop mm -hmm. shop made that comfortability of, uh, of chemistry. So when we were together, everybody played their position and just kind of figured each other out. But it was a camaraderie that we already had together which made that process easier. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, so y'all popping, stuff is going on. How soon after things started popping was you hit with undeserved responsibility? People expecting you to do stuff. You talking about as far as uh, as a, my part as an artist lyrically? No, you you are somebody who is on. Okay. And you know you're the only one on as far as everybody that you know except for the group. You still know all of these people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. How soon after was people on your head about doing for them? Oh, undeserved sure. responsibility. Oh, sure. It, that that happened before the album even dropped. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yep. I had a, I had a responsibility. To pull people in because you know coming up in the 90s you see groups that come in and put their people on and yeah it was a, it was a, a hip-hop tradition yeah to be like if you own you pull your people on so i automatically traditionally try to do that before the album even dropped mm. like before i even knew what was what or what was going to go on with my career yeah it was it was just a something that had to be done because yeah. you know we all strove for this shit for so long now I'm in a position, didn't build my house fully yet, but my house ain't fully built, but I'm still gonna go ahead and try to put put a platform down because this is what we all want. So it's funny you say that because um, uh, this is after the album dropped, you just popped in the Lush Lounge. Yeah. Which I really wish people would talk about the Lush Lounge as much as they talk about the hip hop shop. Yeah. 
because the Lush Lounge really groomed everybody. It did. Right? Hip Hop Shop started it, Lush groomed. But you popped in, and it was like, oh, shit, Swift in the building. They got you on the mic, you spit a verse, and you see me, you was like, what's up? And I'm like, man, congratulations on everything. Man, keep going. And you like, yo, man, as soon as I get in position, I got you. And I could tell that you felt that responsibility. <laughs> and I was like, nah, man, take care of you. Mm. Take care of you, man. I, I, I get it. You got stuff. I didn't know the, the business that well, yeah. but I just knew you had a lot on you because it was just in the beginning. And I'm sure everybody and their mama was on your, your head. And then later on, <clears throat> me, me and you talking again, it was probably one of them days where you was walking your daughter to school and I was too. And you said uh, it was a conversation Dr. Dre and M had. Because when M got on, he immediately was trying to put y'all on. And Dr. Dre was like, build your house first, then move your pe people in. Yeah, this and the kind of told you the same thing. This this the kind <clears throat> this the conversation when me when I was in the studio with Dre and um he was working on something, I was in the kitchen. And when Dre walked out, we was actually in the kitchen by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And he grabbed something out the refrigerator. And he was first telling me about the Up the Smoke tour. Okay. So he was like, yeah, man, I'm trying to put together this tour, man. Everybody calling me, you know, trying to get in on it or whatnot, man. I think it's going to be pretty dope. So it was one of those one shot type thing. I took my opportunity. I was like, yo, I said, well, I said, yo, when you uh, put this tour together, man, you think um, me and the fellas can rock on it or whatever? And he looked at me and he was like, yeah, I think that'd be dope. But you got to talk to Marshall about that, though. Mm. And when he said that, that's when a light bulb clicked in my head. Uh, you know, it taught me every, that one comment taught me everything. Like, yo, play your position. Chain of command, yep. ranks, don't, don't break rank. Yeah, play your position. You yep. know what I'm saying? And that's what made me go home with the mentality to build my house. Yeah. First, before you let everybody in it, because I, I you know, I almost jumped the gun, but it was, I was ignorant. I didn't know. Yeah. But when he said that, it taught me a lot. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And it's, <laughs> it's really dope that he didn't. Because sometimes I'd be like, man, get your man. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your man's trying to go over you. He just gave yep. you a lesson real quick with one statement. Yep. And did, that, did, that taught me something for a lifetime. Yeah, did M ever even come to you about? No, nah, I don't even think he ever said anything to M about it. Because maybe Dre being as seasoned as he was or is, he probably understood. Mm -hmm. we, was, we was new jacks to the game, excited, young. Like, yo, can we, you know, room for us? Yeah, that'd be dope, but you got to talk to Marshall about that, though. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. And that inspired me to say, all right, well, let me go ahead and try to put some things together mm -hmm. to, to, to try to put everybody else on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. I mean, and, and you, you put forth the effort. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've seen that. So before we take a break and bring on other special guests, I remember times where I would hear people talking about D12 and, and I was like wholeheartedly defending, not because my friend was in the group, but because it's what I really believed in. You yeah. know? People used to say, D12 can't rap. And I'm sitting here like, well, who do you listen to? And it'll be somebody whack. And I'm like, how in the hell could you not? If you, if you hear an Eminem and you hear he can rap, how do you hear these people and don't hear they can rap? How much of that flack did you guys actually hear yourselves? We heard that a lot. We heard we heard that a lot, and I couldn't I couldn't really really understand. I couldn't understand it. I I kind of thought maybe it was because of the mainstream part. Mm -hmm. Like you know, a lot of underground artists were respected to be lyrical, but not so much respected to be pop on a mainstream level. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it was hard to, to, to connect the dots. Yeah. yeah, these guys lyrical, but they mainstream. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we were more underground, they probably would have respected the lyricalness if we was underground because they because they got lyricism, underground, mainstream, you're not lyrical. This is just yeah. my theory, you know <clears throat> right. what I'm saying? But I could never really, I could never really understand that, man. Um, Did it ever get to y'all? Not really. It, it didn't get to me, man, because we were we were blessed to have a fan base who who appreciated us lyrically. Still, yeah. yeah, yeah, we were blessed to have a, plant, a fan base that appreciated us. So I never I never let that that never got me down mm -hmm. when I heard that. I just was just looking like I can't understand. Even to this day, you know, um, it it really taught me that whoever people think is whack could be the new wave artists of the day. 
<laughs> Agreed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Agreed. So. Yeah, so that was one thing, and I used to always defend that. And then the Purple Pill song. I would hear that people were saying that you guys started a trend mm. of people popping pills. And I'm like, I mean, you can definitely look back, Bill Cosby, Quaaludes. They was popping pills in the 70s and the 60s. And even Biggie was talking about, some, some say the X make the sex spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> They've been doing that. Why would you put that on? And I think it's just because it was the name of that song. Yeah. And then because Eminem got so big and he talked about drug use so much, they just kind of yeah. dumped it on y'all. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. y'all ever get, did y'all ever hear any of that kind of stuff too? We talking about flack? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. We actually, thank goodness, uh, created a, a core fan base from that because it allowed the fans to be more free when fans was was dark and didn't have a voice. Yeah. You know, and and I and I'm saying this because I've heard fans tell me this, like, man, you guys just didn't give a damn. Y'all ain't give a fuck, man. And it allowed me to come out of my dark space to be who I wanted to be. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I always I always say every every artist that's on top is the voice for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, if you think about uh Jay Z, he's the voice for everybody who hustled that wanted to turn that hustle into something else. Yep. You know, yep. from ground up, he was a better a, a better version of Scarface the movie, you yeah. know? He didn't go wrong, you can see where he is now. I think M was the voice of that person who went through so much at home mm -hmm. and just wanted to scream out loud, Yeah, you yeah. know? And y'all was like... That, that extension of that, and yeah. I think that's why we surprise a lot of people, especially in Detroit, because people will look at Purple Pills and look at that, that character, that those characters of Persona, and be like, man, these guys, but then when they hear the album and they hear the the dark lyrical lyricism, mm -hmm. they they surprise because they didn't it didn't it didn't match up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So here here here's a question. Let's talk about violence in music. Okay. We grew up talking mad shit, yep. you know, astronomical stuff that you probably can't really do in real life. Yeah, you know, but it was it was violence nonetheless. Right. Now you look at music today, it's violent too. Mm -hmm. What do you think curved it to where the violence of music became real life? Where you said the violence of music became real life? Because it wasn't real life when we was doing it, really. Like, yeah. it was happening, but not like now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think um, the fans and the people had a chance to, to, see, to see the realism a little bit more. Like, mm -hmm. it became numb to it. It's like, you know, like, we like, people call our, our rap shock rap. And we used to say crazy stuff and right. wild stuff. Not to bring shock value, that's just how the way we rap, and it was safe at that time. But now, since social media and you and everybody got camera phones and you're able to see footage of just the heini, most heinous stuff that goes on, mm -hmm. people are people are numb to that style of rap now because they're able to see that shit like never, never before. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And back then, you wasn't able to really see it as much mm -hmm. and when you heard it it was like whoa that's just like if you said the word fuck in the 60s it was just like hey who swear you yeah. you know what i'm saying something like that right. you know it's almost that type of effect but i think people had a chance to kind of see this shit every day and just when you thought you seen it all you seeing something even more crazy like oh shit mm -hmm. that's the difference then from now yeah wow <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, music is just, has just changed so much. But you know, speaking of violence in music, we're gonna take you to the booth top so you can spit some verses. Okay. okay. And then we're gonna bring back somebody very special yes, to you, yes, to us, yes. to, to, to Detroit. Yes. So, see y'all on, on the roof. What you say, little nigga? There's a lot of niggas wanting to scrap, so I'ma offer I put a hole in they back like a wet dolphin. A lot of bosses is crisscrossing, niggas wearing bras and women holding more balls than the golfers. Lyrical lockness, a serial killer holding a shotgun. I bury your mama up under hospice. Don't get your ass shot like a stripper up in the topless spot. Mr. Grim Reaper's my mascot. See, I'm obnoxious and highly toxic. I got my cock in your mama's esophagus while I'm shot. The cops plotting to stop us, they watching. But my clock will send a hot shot through they binoculars. You can be as popular as the king of pop and the Obamas. I do a walk by in my pajamas, cocking the llamas. 
Stand in front of your house puffing ganja Waiting for the neighbors to open their flaps up say, nigga, I don't play, nigga You will lay before you ever get the brain, nigga So dirty, you would think I was a grave digger Better think about it before you get brain, nigga What you say, nigga, I don't play, nigga You will lay before you ever get the brain, nigga So dirty, you would think I was a grave digger Better think about it before you get brave, nigga Uh Strap on my hip, slap in the back of a bitch ass A man glance, I'm socking his bitch ass I give him whiplash, these models mimicking the exorcist Breaking their neck when a nigga whip past I'm just hazardous, four-fifth, lifting a rapper high enough to defy the laws of gravity McVeigh, turning beef to vegetarians In the bay, they put contracts on the elderly A half-man and wildebeest I walk up in the church with a woo shirt and smirk while I kill a priest Detroit, extortion capital, set up shop on any avenue Clapping at you hoes, fast to the Nopra holding a trophy of the Golden Globe. My attitude's compatible to those in Attica. Why? I don't dish Why? the caliber. Why? I pass the yuck so he can brandish it. I'm sipping on scotch, laughing at what I did. Bruh, bruh, who you here for? Hey. Bruh, bruh, who you here for? Uh, whose man is this? Bad white when them cops come. No fresh prince look. Jazzy Jeff to the dough. Jazzy Jeff to the dough. Yeah, yeah, Jazzy Jeff to the dough. Jesse Jeff to the door. That was dope. That was dope. That's called good old fashioned violence. Not not the kind that you die for the next day. Y'all new school rappers need to learn from that. Right now we got another special guest on the stage. We all we know we got Swift. Now we got his sister. Red Bone, Red, Red Beezy in the building. Oh cheesy. So you was the inspiration for all of this. I would like to say yes. Wow. Everybody think Swift is my older brother. Really? <laughs> when actually I'm yeah. the older sister. Really? Yeah. I, I never, well, I guess because we're from the hood, you know Yeah, what I'm Swift number seven of eight. Um, no, he's number, he's number eight, actually. I'm number seven. You're the, you the baby? Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't know it was that many of y'all. Yep. In that house? Yep. Yeah, well, well, outside of one. Okay. Yeah. Yikes. So look, my favorite thing from Redbone <laughs> is when she says pimp phrases. <laughs> you got to give me at least one or two good old pimp phrases. Uh, shit, you about as worthless as a pocket on the back of a t-shirt. <laughs> 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 and I need you as much as a duck knee boots. <laughs> <laughs> Was you a pimp in your past life? I think so. I think so. I think so. Because you got the slick talk. Listen, and you know what? I've had that for a long... You wouldn't believe I used to be shy at one point in my life. Who? Me. Like, you, the other stuff you said, I'm I'm just totally shocked because, you're, because you're, you're so it, outspoken. Yes, yeah, only because it was a big difference. Like, I got Swift by four years, but my sister's over me because, mm-hmm. like, me and Swift, we, we grew up like this. Okay. My other, my sisters are very much older than us. Okay. So when he was very little, and I was, I was a loner. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I was to myself. I didn't have. I had a younger brother. I had a way older sister. So it was just me. Yeah. So I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say I was shy. I was, I was reserved. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't never follow crowds. I'm, I'm, I guess I made myself interesting enough for people to wonder what's I mean, my you story. You don't follow crowds now. Exactly. I don't. Yeah, that that just ain't no, you. If I saw you acting like anybody, I'd be like. That's not her. Mm-hmm. Some some ain't right. I can't believe she got cloned. With me. <laughs> AI. <laughs> this AI red. Where's Red Bone? What have you done with her? So, <laughs> so Swift was actively looking for a deal. Was you actively looking for a deal too? When Swift had went off, okay. What people don't know before D12 mm-hmm. and before Raw Collection, we were Trump tight. Mm-hmm. And Trump tight consisted of Swift and Beretta, which were the rabies, mm-hmm. um, Lowdown, and me. I was misdemeanor mm-hmm. okay. before my name got stole. Wow. A yeah. whole nother you story, sure whole nother day. But we was, and we was called Trump tight, you know, and we was with some cats from the East Side, had that paper and stuff, and believed in us. But only thing I can say is they didn't do paperwork. They didn't do homework. They didn't. They didn't go into it, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They just had the money, let's put them on, and it wasn't that simple, yeah. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And so after that, I kind of died down from 
rapping, start doing hood rap shit with my street friends. And, <laughs> 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 and you know, and then when he um, started doing D12, like, you got to think, I'm telling my age, but I've been rapping since 83. You okay. know what I'm saying? So it was going to always be in me, but I just kind of took a break from it. Mm. And then when he went and was D12, and then he came back, with the idea of rock collection, whatever, of course I'm with it. Yeah. But in the meantime, like people don't even know that I was the first lady of rock bottom before rock collection. Really? They don't know that I was with a group called The Omen, which was me, yeah. Tango, and Cash from I rock remember bottom. The Omen. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. me, Tango, and Cash, and a guy named Terry. Terry got killed in 96. Okay. And then they formed rock bottom. I was going to go over to rock bottom, but I didn't. Got with Trump tight, you know, so. Yeah. But when he came back and popped the idea about Raw Collection, I mean, who wouldn't jump on that? You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So. Man, Raw, Raw Collection had was buzzing. Yeah. I remember that, man. Like, <laughs> y'all first show I seen was at the Lush. Mm. The Lush was everything. For, it for, was. for me, the Lush was everything. That was, yeah. was Hip Hop Shop 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It definitely was. Yeah. And it was like the Hip Hop Shop for written raps. Yeah. Yeah. Because hip hop shop was all free. Where at the Lush, you it was had for to songs. Have, you had, you had to have a dope yeah. verse. Yeah. Where yeah. you're getting that back tap to get your ass yeah. off the stage. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But I seen y'all performing, and I can't remember the name of the song, but it was um, a, a Beretta said, uh, I sock you dead in your face and watch your earlobes touch. <laughs> yeah. We don't have that much. That and was then you R came on right after that. <laughs> I was like, this is the greatest shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I know them. <laughs> yeah, that was the R-A-W. I remember that. I remember Man, that. Man, that was, I mean, and every people knew the songs. High Power 2.0, uh, you know. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. You know, I was lucky enough to get a track on that album. <laughs> I, I did not know how to mix. It was the worst mix ever, you know. But I was like, damn. This, this, you, all of y'all is the first people I seen that was doing it on their own. Mm. Right. You know, you didn't get, have them on Shady Records. They was under you and y'all was just doing y'all thing. And I yeah. could see the fans and I'm just like, man, I need this. I need somebody to sign to help me out. <laughs> Cause this man, this is crazy. You know, it, it, I, I think it's a part of history that just don't get talked about. Mm. You know, um, it, 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 honestly, it pisses me off when I hear these conversations about Detroit hip hop and I don't hear D12. Mm. They skip right over it. I don't hear Raw Collection. Yeah. They skip right over it. Yeah. You know, uh, they. I don't hear Miss Murder. Mm -hmm. They skip right over that whole open mic series that lasted for over for, for ten years. That's because nowadays, um, well, the younger generation, they don't do homework. I was just gonna say that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Now, yeah. not to big up my son, but I'm gonna big up my son. His name is Axel, and Axel does homework. When you hear him, like I can say, I proudly pass the torch. Okay. Because he did his homework. Right. He knows hip hop. He doesn't know rap. Mm -hmm. He knows hip hop, and right. that's kind of important if you're gonna have hip hop parents and a hip hop uncle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To not do your homework and just be rapping about Molly's perks, Percocet. You know he don't right. rap yeah. like that. You know so, <laughs> and it's important to do homework and know hip hop. If you know that, then you know the people that came. But to take responsibility, we kind of dropped the ball too. Okay. Because we were so eager to get on and get on and get on, and we shoot the younger ones and, mm -hmm. and didn't take them under our wing and show them when we didn't, when we when we missed our bus, we should have been taking the ones under us, under our right. wing and showing them and giving them what what the tools that we learned, mm -hmm. even though we didn't make it to where we wanted to be, we could have gave those tools away. But instead, we still trying to get to the still top. We still to trying to rap. We still trying. So we dropped the ball too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of, a lot of the young generation um, put, they put things in a box to where, like, I'll give you a prime example. Like, it was somebody online, you know, they was talking about M, and they was having a list of who they felt the best rapper in Detroit was, and they had a whole bunch of Detroit artists. But when somebody mentioned Eminem, somebody was just like, and he thought, oh no, maybe out there, but in Detroit, no. As if he wasn't from Detroit. 
So it's just like, I, you know, people got their own perspectives on how <clears> they <throat> look at the old artists who paved the way here. Yeah. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I think it's probably because of what Red is saying. Yeah. You know, if we shunning them, do yeah. you ever want to even mention somebody who shunned you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably not. Um, I just seen... Um, uh, it's a new artist named Sexy Red, I think her oh, name is. Man, no. She says, pretty much, if you 30 and rapping, you need to cut it out. I I I, I seen that. Yeah, and I'm like, you 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 gonna be 30? I said, oh, so she go retire in four years, <laughs> basically. But exactly. they say rap is a young man's dream and an old man's. Uh, 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 rap is a young man's dream and an old man's. Something. And I had told somebody, I said, 30 years from now, the songs that you hear now is going to be considered old school and they're going to very much be alive to people, to some some people. And if Bruce Springsteen, to name one rock, an older rock star can do it, can tour and still make Mm -hmm. albums, hip hop artists can do it too. But there's no such thing as an age. Yeah. It, you know, we make it an age. You know, one thing about humans, we always want categories and themes and boxes and check marks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just, if, if R&B singers don't have to be a certain age to sing, no. why is it a limit of age on They only do it in hip hop. And I don't understand hip-hop. that. I don't understand. When we were younger, a lot of the cats that we liked were kind of, a lot of them were older. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't make no big deal about it. Like, mm-hmm. you too old to be rapping. Yeah. Molly Mall and DJ Red Alert, they was old as hell. Yeah. Or, and the piggyback, if you if you wait two years to drop a record, you, you're not relevant. Mm-hmm. We used to listen, we used to wait for that artist to drop a record every year or two. That was the standard. But then now, if you wait two years, you're not relevant. You wait two weeks. <laughs> like, yeah. you have to drop at least a verse or some kind of content every day almost, yeah. you know, to stay quote unquote relevant. Because everything is fast. <clears throat> it's fast. Yeah. We want it now, now, yeah. now, yeah. now. So, now. so here, here's a question for, for both of y'all because we understand that the industry isn't the only industry, you know, especially when you have a core fan base. Yep, that's your industry yeah. right mm-hmm. there. Do you not feel like people don't get that until after they've been in the industry and now they're on their their own, that it's actually better outside of the national music industry. I think people will, will learn how to appreciate not needing the machine afterwards. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the machine is like, yo, we need this machine to do what we need to do. Mm-hmm. But we don't know. We're ignorant to a lot of the, the mm-hmm. business. And then we learn as we get in. And we learn as we go, learn as we go. Then when you finally f- in the lane where you can do things on your own without the middleman, you learn to appreciate that. Yeah. And you make more money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah. make way more money. You cannot go gold and make more money than somebody that went Absolutely. platinum if mm-hmm. you're independent. Yeah. And when you have such a big high expectation of the machine in the machine, doesn't show that expectation. Expectation. Mm-hmm. They don't show you what you imagine the machine to be, mm-hmm. and then you know you have to really go through it in order to sit back and be like, man, I wish I could have just did this on my mm-hmm. own. <laughs> so okay, so <clears throat> you got that era when D12 came out, Raw Collection came out. It was way different. We could sell CDs and all of this stuff. Right. What if D12 and Raw Collection came out in 2023? How how do you think? things would have turned turned out with this new business? I think, not to sound arrogant, but we some Detroit niggas. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We we kind of think a little different mm-hmm. than, than a lot of people. You understand what I'm saying? We carry this air about us. You know, I don't care if you broke or not, we carry an air about us. So mm-hmm. I think that if we came out now, with how we were back in the day, yeah. we would have been on. Because we, we we were smart thinking back then. We didn't know everything, yeah. but we that don't mean we wasn't smart in our thinking and the moves that we made and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Yes, we needed to learn more, because yeah. we were young, but if we was in this age with the mind we got, oh, honey. And then, the, then these big labels is a, mud, is, a mud, is a mud now, because now, we would have been on, and with the social media, and you have a thousand people right there access. 
the the way they sell records, they change the dynamics to the way you sell records to where you can't even reap the benefits of, just imagine if you got a dollar for every time somebody listens to your song. Right. Right. But that they, ain't it. They change the dynamics. Yeah. They gave you that platform to have your own audience and, and the independent and whatever, whatever, but they changed the financial But the dollars is people. Now they're giving you half a penny or whatever, whatever. Not so even, you, no, it's not even half, bro. You it's know, way less. It's way less. So it's like, why? <clears throat> you know, I wish they didn't change the dynamics of that financial structure so we can reap the benefits of this new wave. But I think, I think the money is people. Because let's say, for instance, an artist, let's say, for instance, Raw Collection got on the internet, plugged it, plugged it, plugged it, plugged it, plugged it, on all these platforms, videos, songs, woo, 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 like the guy when there's always something going on, he, he, I don't know his name, but he Johnny on the spot making a rap about it. I don't care if it's the oh. Alabama brawl, you know who I'm talking yeah. about, but he Johnny on the spot. He got a lot of He fun. got a lot of, yeah, out, yeah, so, you know, just imagine if we kept working it, working it, working it, the more fans we got, that's our revenue. Now, they changed the money to be how many people like you. Yeah. If this certain amount of people like you, then we can pay you some. Now we can talk about some money. But if you ain't got that many followers and that many, that's why they get your, get your followers up, get your views, get and your I, likes, and, get and, your and, likes. Yep, and that's why they're based and giving you deals based off of how well you do for Popular. yourself and your whole audience. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Which really trips me out because if if you, like, uh, let's say uh, La Russell, you know who he yep. is? Okay, so La Russell, he got his following and he actually created a platform for other artists. Now you got famous people wanting to perform in his backyard, mm -hmm. right? He, for everybody that follows him, he makes money off of them, not from the streams. People right. panning in his backyard, they, 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 they booking him for shows out of town. He's making all of that himself to the point to where when Rock Nation had a con contacted him the numbers didn't look like how he wanted it to look. And he's like, man, y'all going with that. So my thing is, if you got that following, I don't understand why you would go to the record label anyway. Anyway. You're right. You're right about that. You know, what What? What are you looking for that you're not doing? You already popping. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. So, yeah, I think from the talent level and from if y'all was able to make a city pop with no internet, mm -hmm. but not like... We had internet. Yeah, I mean, like, it wasn't. You know, it was like AOL like chat back then, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. No internet. We had MySpace. We did have MySpace. But was we really on it like that? Yes. No, we was just in the streets. We was, we was, but we did MySpace, though. Did y'all? Yeah. Yeah, MySpace, yeah. Because yeah, I remember yeah. Rock Collection, I remember having to be on MySpace like that was a. That was the beginning of a flood to let your people, let people hear you. Was MySpace early 2000s though? Like listen, early, early? Listen, MySpace, I stopped being on MySpace. And you remember when Ali was living in the house I was living in? Yeah. I used to be on MySpace over there on his computer. Hmm. Now, I can say to me, the best social media was MySpace. Hmm. because I, w I made so many overseas connections mm -hmm. with MySpace. It wasn't it was like new. Facebook got boundaries that mm -hmm. we can't cross, like only 2% of your following can see any posts that you do. Where MySpace, no, if they were following you, they saw it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can inbox as many people as you wanted and you didn't get flagged for, for, for spam. So I would link up with a lot of people and when I first started going overseas, it was through those contacts mm -hmm. from MySpace. Okay. And now, now MySpace, MySpace is actually still there. It's just not what it was. It sure isn't. I went yeah. on there. I, I, I said, Lord, what is <laughs> boring as hell. Like, yeah. I mean, but all of it is boring to me. I don't even have an IG page. So how do y'all feel about the new generation of hip-hop? Hip hip well, you know what? Pros and cons. My whole thing is this, man. I, I, I feel like there's a lot of dope artists and there's a lot of whack artists. But they say this is how it always been. I think the difference is back then, the CEOs and the A&Rs didn't sign you unless you were dope. They believed in the type of cloth we tore from. Yeah. The CEOs <clears throat> and, the, and, the, and the A&Rs don't really believe in that type of cloth that we're tore from today's time. So it's all about money, hook, bag, gimmick. I'll get the bag. Yeah, get yeah the you know bag. what I'm saying? So now you're seeing more artists that don't appeal to the type of cloth we're tore from. So now we have to sit back 
and try to analyze and see the goodness in him mm-hmm. versus, oh, he's sweet. Now right. we gotta analyze and be like, hold on, let's 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 try to see the goodness in what they're doing. But a lot of them though, like I can't even front to you. I, I think it's coming back. You know what I'm saying with the with the lyrical content that we're used to. Okay. With the J. Coles, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The um little Dirks. If you really body rich, all these people, Lotto, Cardi. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> they actually spit like Cardi actually spit. She spits, yeah. Lotto actually spits. Um what's that girl? Um um, Rhapsody? No, she got the um, mm. Scar Scarlet. Oh, Scarlet can rap. She actually spit. So Scarlet. It's, it's, yeah, 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 Scarlet. So it's it's, it's actually coming back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is when you listen to them, a lot of them use these auto tunes and stuff like that. But it's actually coming back to where if you listen to them, they saying something. Yeah, I you agree. You know, I, I will say that, and just in I their agree. own way. Yeah, it, it was a dry spell. I ain't gonna lie, it was a dry spell over the years where you like, damn, it's a lot of whack muds. But now that you mention these artists, yeah. you're right. You know. You're right. There are a lot of more artists that's coming out in today's town. Mm. Yeah. That's tore from the cloth we tore from. Mm-hmm. Pamela P. Dot she from here. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Doing She's dope. Thing. Super dope. Uh, what's his name? Simba. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. big up to them too. So too. yeah, I think it's coming back. You know, every every it's it's a phase in everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They had to do it to see how how it did. You got to mm-hmm. do it to see how it does. And then everything yeah. just an evolving just goes around and around and around and comes. So because there was a disconnect from our generation to the one after and now this new one, do you think that there is a place? for our generation in this new world of hip hop? I do. I don't. You don't think so? I do. I, I think I think a lot of the young cats probably don't think our generation has it, but will be surprised mm-hmm. if we come out there and show their ass, like like I give them the name somebody like Scarface. Like I done played Scarface for a lot of the young generation and they probably looked at him like this, oh, what this old dude want to say? And then when they hear him spit, yeah. They're like, yo. But see, okay, then <clears throat> I feel what you're saying, yeah. But a lot of them, again, don't do homework. Yeah. Don't look into the to yeah. the greats that came before and listen to things of that nature. It's only a handful that would do it. And the reason I say it is because, again, they like shit. These old motherfuckers ain't teach us shit. But here's the irony. It was a show, I think it was Lil Dirk, The Baby, or somebody, they canceled their show because didn't enough people they didn't sell enough tickets, but yet and still the Nas concert with Nas mm-hmm. and some else sold out. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So all that y'all old cats, y'all old cats, y'all old school, they still selling out concerts yeah. because they got music that people really want to hear. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't like a, it's like I look at, and I'm not saying all the new hip hop, I'm not saying that, but I look at some of these new songs like Rapping Duke, Da mm-hmm. you know, it was funny, it was cool. It was whack as But it wasn't nothing that we really wanted to, we wasn't going to a Rapping Duke concert, but he probably sold a bunch a bunch at the time. Yeah, and to piggyback off of you, bro, I didn't, at the time, I didn't think Rapping Duke was whack. You know, really? You know, you know why? Mm-hmm. Because that was at a time to where the skills were being developed. So this is what it was. I couldn't look pat at the age I was listening to rap and Duke. This is what rap was. So I'm 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 learning mm. like, huh? I'm fi- I'm finding myself at the time. Yeah. I, I wasn't in the lyrical lyrical when rap and Duke came out. Yeah. But when rap and Duke came out, and you trying to find yourself, you like, huh? It, and then as rap evolved, you evolved with it. That was at yeah. a time that we got what they gave us. Yeah. We, yeah, I guess. You think you're bad <laughs> with your rap? Hey, I, tell you, I, boy, remember, I started this crap. <laughs> hey, just let me say this true story. Who was fresher than him? Listen, do you remember that time I went to Cincinnati mm-hmm. with my mother or whatever, came back, Swift didn't go, and I called him in the basement. <laughs> I remember Because we used to always, you know, on the music, yeah, like, yeah. I called him in the basement, like I heard something, because it hadn't got to Detroit yet. Yeah. I heard something. <laughs> I popped that tape in. When I tell you, we were like, oh, that nigga Swoop was like, whoa. I'm going to tell you what it was. Yes, please tell him what it was. It was, it, it was, it was Wipe Out by the Fat Boys. 
<laughs> hey, she let me hear wipe out by the fat boys and Roxanne by UTFO, dog. Wow. <laughs> and it changed my life when I went to that base for like I got what? a fat boys record in the next room, right? Duh. Now. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me go back to the rap and die, uh, the rap and duke to, to piggyback off of that. It, it, it <clears> was what it was. We was there when rap was developing. Yeah. So a lot of cats don't understand when we was listening to that Run DMC, here we go. When when did when Run say, well, why you wear those glasses? So, so I, I can see. see. We was like, what? I'm talking about we went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we went crazy. We went crazy. We were, I'm talking about crazy you, beans. Like you, you couldn't tell us that wasn't the do- That was the most Man, simplest line ever. Yeah. Why you wear those glasses? So I can see. Yeah. So you can imagine when Follow the Leader yeah. came yeah. out, like he ordered it on the box so much. <laughs> <laughs> was it Follow the Leader or Probably that. Follow Follow the leader, a, a, a microphone don't, thing. Don't, that too. Now I follow the leader where he was on that old school car like a gangster. Was yeah, he? that was follow the leader. Man, he ordered that off the box so much, like they just kept coming on back to back. You order that swift, yup. Yeah. The box. The box. The For those who the don't game. know, the <laughs> box was on cable. It was all music videos, but you had to order. It's like 99 cents. That was when we had Barton Cable. Barton Cable. You <laughs> Revolutionary. Call the phone number. Yeah. Revolutionary. And it would charge your phone bill 99 cents so you could watch that video. And then you used to watch the box and you used to see the numbers flash on the screen of what, what number was going to come on next. And you knew the number of the video. So when you see the number, you're like, hold on, I ain't coming in there. So and so about to come on. <laughs> Wow. Number, number 547, that's Rakim. Yeah. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> How much money did you think they was making on sync Man, back then? Listen, because like he said, we was we was getting into the groove of rap. That was, was streaming. New. Yeah. Basically. But they was getting paid per stream. Yeah. That was. 99 cents 99 per stream. Cent. That was. That wow. Was. That was. Now that you think about it, that's crazy. It and was we, just their own way. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we so we was there at its infancy to see it transition, mm-hmm. and now it is where it is. So so we're we're looking for a certain kind of style that we're used to. If we can respect the difference that it's bringing, because that's mm-hmm. all we ever did over the years to see it change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we expect a certain kind of way that made us feel special, like yo. And I think Rakim changed that. So anybody who came after Rakim who inherited that type of style that he the the metaphors making you think yeah. making you feel like they, did you hear what he just said because he was like top tier for me he, like yeah, yeah. Was, but the one who inspired me mm-hmm. that i can honestly say okay it's a go it was mc like because what she did i was somewhat of a tomboyish mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and even when the hip-hop shop like i was one of the first females to go in there and battle men in a yeah. hip hop shop, MC you know Light. what I'm saying? <clears throat> and MC Light came and, and she showed me that you can be who you are. You ain't got to be prissy, you ain't got to sell sex, you ain't got yeah. to talk about yep. ass and titties, and yep. you can really spit and mm-hmm. be accepted and by of, your lyrical skills and not and a lot by of, being yep. a girl. Or, and a lot of know. people don't know that MC Light, Big Up MC Light, was the first female solo artist to ever have a full live album. Mm. Really? MC Light was the first solo female artist, rap artist to have a full-length album. I was DJing literally like about a month ago. I DJed uh, the 93 High School Reunion. Mm. And, you know, I'm playing all the cuts from back then. I put on Paper Thin. And I had to stand back and I was like, all of the men are reciting every single word MC Light said. And I was like, I don't think... How many other female rappers that hit the industry were men mm. were reciting their lyrics? You can't because say that about was, Lil' Kim because yeah, yeah, it was it was it was either or. It didn't re- she didn't say things to make a man feel like I ain't about to say that. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. that's what I'm saying. You know, Lil' Kim was dope. I'm not saying she wasn't dope, yeah. but just yeah. MC Light was that person where everybody was saying what she was saying. Yeah. The difference was Paper thin. MC Light wasn't um, eating sushi, playing with her coochie. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but right. Lil Kim was dope. Yeah, Lil Kim was Lil dope. Kim was dope. Yeah. Do you think Lil Kim birthed this generation of female rappers the way they are now? Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, I do. Um, 
you had you had the uh, the the HW the HBO girl. The, what was that? Holes with attitudes. Holes with attitudes. HWA. I, yeah. yeah, I think they came out a little bit before Lil Kim, mm-hmm. but solo artist wise, mm-hmm. and, and and had lyrics to match that type of gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yes. know what I'm saying? You just didn't look at it and say, well. I like her because she's doing this. Like she can rap. Yeah. Like rap, rap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I thought, you know, it was the, the rumor that Biggie wrote all of her raps. He wrote a few, but yeah. Biggie been gone for a while, and yeah. she is still getting. She didn't busy. do the Nikki and Safari. Yeah. Because after Nikki and Safari split, Nikki kind of. It's, it's different, yeah. you know. Like she still sounds like Kim. Yeah. So I I think. The, the funny thing about the whole you too old to rap at 30, I don't think that people really get as good as they're going to get until they're after 30. Mm-hmm. Because you start living and you start to put that life in them songs your lyrics, and in yeah. them verses. You ain't just spitting a bunch of stuff. Absolutely. You know, uh, I was trying to coin, like, if you know, you got different genres of music, like alternative rock. Heavy metal, you know, hip hop has subgenres, but we don't never say it. Yeah, like crunk is a style of hip hop. Mm. Hyphy is a style of hip hop. Drip is is now. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to coin a phrase, and somebody kept saying, "What about adult contemporary?" I said, "That sounds like old people stuff." No, and I was like, "By the time we're thirty and up, we kind of in our primes. Why don't we just call it prime hip hop?" Hmm. Prime time. You know, you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's yeah. dope. Even Prime though, time. yeah, it's, it's people that are 50, 60 years old that like hip hop, but nobody's making music for the 30 and up crowd. Because mm. I'm 52 and I still spit. You know, older rappers are still trying to appeal to kids. And yeah. it's like, bro, you you grown. Just talk about your grown Just up stuff. Just talk about your grown yep. up stuff. And that's, yep. you know what? That's where they go wrong. That's where the younger people be like, you too old to rap because you trying to keep up with them. Do you. Exactly. Show you show show how seasoned you are. So if you've been rapping for a long time, you should be well seasoned right now. Exactly. Yeah. Instead yeah. of trying to keep up with these young kids, make them keep up with you. Exactly. If you the prime timer. Exactly. Yeah. Then you give them something to look forward to. Absolutely. When they get. And now you can bridge that gap. Mm-hmm. And there you go. School them. Okay. Yeah. This Absolutely. is how you get where we are now. Yeah. You know, yeah. because honestly, I don't see 20 years from now a lot of these artists that's out touring because a lot of y'all, majority of y'all only had one song. Mm. One trick ponies. Yeah. With I don't, I don't see y'all having a core fan base because y'all fan base really don't even remember y'all after six months especially especially in this today's generation with the demand that demand fast demand that everybody is on mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you gotta your work ethic gotta be stronger than ever yeah mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying okay last question no not the last question because i gotta we gotta talk about what you got going on yeah but you know how you had the, the temptations they're still touring but it's not the original members Mm. Will that happen in hip hop? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, slump, slum village. Yeah. It, yep. And let's 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 talk about let's go with D twelve for for example. Uh, you know, we 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 did the Snoop tour. Big shout out to Snoop, and we was able to talk to Snoop, and we was like, yo, it was just me and Canaver, and we was like, yo, man, we know we know we trying to keep this brand going, and he actually mentioned the Temptations. He was like, yeah, y'all from y'all from Detroit, right? He like not asking us, but just saying like y'all from Detroit, right? <clears throat> you had a lot of artists that came from Motown or whatever who just uh, was keeping the brand going. And as long as y'all continue to perform the songs that touch their heart, that's all that matter. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of looked at each other, was like, thanks, thanks for the advice. Snoop. Even with him <laughs> and Denon being this hype man, mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. proof ain't here, so. Yeah, so you know, you you the brand might drop off to be one, two people, three people, whatever the case may be, but the fans want what would warm their heart. Mm-hmm. With the dreadnoughts, you got you got Slot and um, Pinochle, Aries. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You got uh, Soup. I mean, yeah, Soup, when um, Soup and Conflict had their, they were still the dreadnoughts, but they branched off. Yeah. You understand? So, but when yeah. you see a Tribe Called Quest performing, and somebody standing in five spot. It's unoriginal. Yeah. Of course, and that, it can never be duplicated, but it happens. 
you know, like it's so crazy how that's almost like what happened. Well, not almost. That happened with the PM Dawn thing. You know what I'm saying? Big uh, rest in peace to PM Dawn. How the, the new guy came in and then now he's torn rapping. Uh, what's his name? Prince Paul. Mm -hmm. he, he's rapping his verses now torn to this day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that would work with everybody. It worked with him. Everybody still embrace him. Because you know he started off a certain certain amount of years ago and still doing it, but to me, I don't, I don't, I don't know about. I think, I think as we get older, it's gonna happen. Mm. You sixty years old, you want to hear Trial Call Quest? Q Tip might be like, you about to get Trial Call Quest? New Fife. You know, but he's never gonna be, be the fight. Same, though, but it's it, the same it, it, thing it, it, with the, the Temptations. Same deal, though. How many original Temptations is it? But you know what? Originality, originality play a big part of the sport of hip hop. So, Absolutely. So I, I think it, it kind of be like a little bit like resistant because I of think, that fact. I, I think it would be because I, I think hip hop is probably the most egotistical genre of them all. Absolutely. But it's going to get to a point to where, you know, people are going to pass on and we're still going to want our stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard anybody mention the term the sport of R&B? But no. you but you heard somebody say the sport of hip hop. Mm. Cause the sport of hip hop brings forth that spirit of originality and writing your own lyrics and keeping that same integrity. R and B mm. don't hold them standards. The I same. agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you're not about to say, okay, we about to. This is the new Michael Jordan. Jordan is Jordan, and that's Jordan that. Is Jordan, and that's, and that. that's the that's, sport. That's the sport of hip hop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a serious point right there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> The sport of hip hop. The sport of hip hop. So yeah. before we get out of here, man, for those who don't know, albums have not stopped coming out. And I was kind of mad. I was just looking for uh, your album, uh, Grey Blood. Okay. It ain't on the streaming service. It's not on Apple. It's on everything else, though. Um, it's not the album I'm on. You are on, um, no, you on Detroit Life. Okay. You on Detroit Life. Are you on Grey Blood? No, you on Detroit Life. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite a few albums out there, but it's one specific song I was looking for because that bass line is crazy. Oh, the Great Blood, the theme doo -doo, song. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> Good luck. Good yeah, luck. Um, yep. but you got more stuff going on, and for those who don't know, I, I just need you to let them know what you got going on. Yeah, we just, we finishing up. We got 95% done, 98% done of My Brother's Keepers 2 with me and Canaver. This will be our second album together. Is it a D12 album? No, it's it's this it's, it's, it's a D12, it's, it's Swift and Canaver. We, it's D12 branded. Mm -hmm. You'll see the brand all over it, but it's, it's Swifty, Swifty, Canaver and Swifty McVay presents My Brother's Keeper 2. Mm -hmm. So we go drop that soon, maybe next year or the end of this year. And I got a double album coming out called Grey Rose. Okay. Yep. 26 songs. You know, um, me teamed up with AD Empire from Toronto. So it was a collaboration album. But it's just going to be me on 26 songs and no features. I don't dig that. So I got wow. a lot to talk about. Yep. Wow. Yep. That's a, that's a <laughs> lot by yourself. Yep. And it's almost done? It's done. It's done. It's wow. done. Wow. I got the album cover ready and everything. We just doing we just uh, doing visuals. Are, are we ever gonna get another Redbone song? Um, I'm not gonna just totally dismiss it, mm -hmm. but just sitting here right now thinking about it, no. But I won't dismiss it. Like the way I am now, if I hear a fire beat, oh, I need to get on this. I'm, that still yeah, hasn't went nowhere. If I hear something. That you know, wait. So you my you soul in your up. three stacks mode, pretty much. Kind of, but I'm I'm folk. I've been acting. I'm an actress. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested in that, and because of my adult ADD, I can't do a thousand things at once. <laughs> so, and that's and, and I like it. You and know. The, how many movies is it? Actually, I've been in a lot of movies. On Tubi, mm -hmm. I'm in um, Tales of the Detroit Pig Lady. Okay. A movie called The Coney. Mm -hmm. And a series called The Plant. Okay. On YouTube, me and Soup MC got a movie called Detroit 80s, Killers Are Us. Um, I have a series called Surveillance. I've been in a movie called uh, Yasmin's Story, um, Al Nuke's Detroit Dream. Um, I got a little short film called Last Drink. 
with Uchi Khan. Shout out to Jacody Films, Jigsaw. And um, it's a few more movies that I've been in. Go to Tubi, The Coney. We got a movie called um, Blue Diamond coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I play a cop. They always got me playing cops. But this is, I'm just into the acting thing. And like I said, if it's a beat that grooves me and it's a good concept. Mm -hmm. me, matter of fact, I was talking to Monica Blair the other day. Yeah. And I was saying how me and her never had a song. So I might team up with Monica Blair. I actually. And get a little song out here. I actually hit her up to come over here and, and get interviewed. That's my boo right yeah. there. Big so. shout out to Monica Blair, man. She blessed me on a whole lot of songs over the years, yeah. man. Yeah, she's which a talent, is, man. Which is a lot of my fans' uh, favorites, too, the songs we collaborated together. Wow. She's always been a beast. Yeah, she yeah. bring the heat every time, yeah. like nonstop. She's fire, man. It's, it's, it's so many artists here that is, which is why I want to do the booth top thing, so mm. I can start to show the world all of the talent we got here. And it is no knock to the ones that are popular now. It's just more artists than them. It's way more. Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. go ahead and put them out there. But I really appreciate y'all for coming through. Thanks, man. I wanted Great. to make sure. <laughs> sky that, five. Can sky five. <laughs>